I would call myself an entrepreneur, a technologist, uh, an innovator. You know, innovation is being able to see connections where there may not be any. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't even say it that way. I mean, innovation is seeing connections where most people might not see them. It's not just one connection. It's looking at all the possibilities of the way things could connect. Because in the end, we're designing technology for people, people to use it. To do that, you need to focus on enabling the human, whether it's a person with a disability or a soldier in a trench trying to operate a robot to go in and look for hostages. I've always resisted labels. Um, I've always resisted saying this is what I want to be. I've always looked for exciting things to do. I've thought, wow, I'm really interested in how people are living and working in space. And so I went out and I looked for people who were studying that sort of thing. Or if there was no one working on it, I started working on it. I mean, there's lots of interesting people in this world and I wanted to work you know, on the things that we mutually find interesting or can go after together. Um, I was a professor of biomedical engineering and um, I saw that uh, particularly kids with disabilities um, didn't have uh, access to low-cost technology. The consumer electronics revolution hadn't come to the assistive technology industry. So this was uh, one of the interfaces we used with kids with cerebral palsy to help them to do supination pronation as they controlled Cosmobot. Um, this was a, a wearable, some wearable sensors that, were, that was meant to mimic Cosmobot's jetpacks. They could put on their head and nod their head and move it around. When we started the company, we did have this vision that uh, kids should really be able to interact um, with more than just a computer. They should have you know, a robot that could help them with their physical therapy, that could help them with their social skills. So that was really how we, we started. This project um, is looking at how do you help surgeons retain skills that they've learned when they're not near a surgical simulator or, or they're out of the OR. So the idea is that we're trying to develop um, some games that would replicate uh, typical surgical skills like uh, not tying or skills that would need ambidexterity because those are some of the things that seem to fade a little bit. Uh, you know, this is just a, a proof of concept. Can we show command? So this is an off-the-shelf handheld that uh, happens to be able to run Android um, and it's mil-spec so it's field hardened. We can, take this, we can take this to Greenland. So this is one of the simplest tests, simple reaction time. Literally all you do is you just react as fast as you can when the target appears. Taking simple reaction time is like a thermometer. It says, are you responding like you normally would respond? And if not, what's wrong? Are you tired? Are you stressed? Have you been hit in the head? I think just like uh, heart rate and temperature and blood pressure, every time you go into the doctor's office, they should take your neurocognitive temperature. Um, how, how is your brain functioning today? Um, and if it's not up to par, what else could be going on? You could say that we don't have focus because we're not doing one thing. Or you could say our focus is on innovating, which means that we need to be aware of what um, are the interesting problems that people have and what are the interesting domains of research and how can we tie all these things together. I'm very passionate about showing that you can, as an engineer, be passionate about solving the problems of real people.